The Internet's most popular live streaming platform, Twitch, was hacked and suffered a massive data breach. More than 125 gigabytes of information appeared online, claiming to be from the website and included leaked source codes, user payouts, and more. The hack revealed the revenue of creators, including popular socialist and Make the Rich pundit, uh, Make the Rich Pay pundit Hassan Piker, who makes over $210,000 a month. The revelation drew criticism online. And while Piper's monthly average may seem like he's breaking in the dough, the Amazon-owned streaming platform's top earners have earned over a million dollars in the past two years. Ryan and Emily, what do you guys make of this this leak? Uh, I think I'm going to start a Twitch channel. <laughs> uh, so I, I know I know Hassan. I, I went on his Twitch stream when I was out um, in LA doing my book tour a couple years ago, uh, and you know he he always has had his uh, sub count his subscriber count like publicly up up on his screen he's at, at like something like 50,000 and every hour you know he says hey there's about to be an ad if you don't want the ad you, you can subscribe for five dollars so it wouldn't have taken anybody you know more than three seconds to do the math and find out that he's been making more than two hundred thousand dollars a month the entire time it's he's, just another excuse to beef right like this is another excuse yeah, yeah. To beef. Like, everybody knew the, it but it's another hook it's right. a the fresh people, hook the people who are mad at him are the people uh, who are already mad at him now yeah. they have an extra reason to be mad at him right. and you know yet yeah, he's he wants himself to be taxed more like so he's 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 not saying he doesn't he know he's now that he's rich he no longer agrees uh that we should tax the rich um, and, and somebody, somebody was like, uh, you know, you claim not to be rich. He's like, dude, I'm rich. Yeah. I am rich. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you, like, I've never, I'm, I'm not claiming that. Um, he also streams, what, like 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. it, not, not that that means, like, everybody who does that uh, should be making a million plus dollars a year. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, and also wait till people find out that most Twitch streamers don't just make money off Twitch. Hassan has a YouTube page yeah. uh, that yeah. has you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, um, probably other uh, avenues of, of income. Well, so, so yeah, my there, guess there, is plenty of plenty can, of opportunity for outrage. Yeah, you could probably assume that he's making double to triple that actual amount per month. My guess is he's probably bringing in, you know, that amount right there just off of Twitch was what over two million dollars annually. So he's probably bringing in something closer to five uh, million if you if you bring in all. I mean, it's speculation, of course, but. Yeah knowing that he's making that much there and then kind of doing the math like you say ryan it doesn't take much to figure this out how much people are actually making if they know how these platforms actually make money but i think with him in particular it is the fact that he's you know make the rich pay um it, it's the same sort of criticism that was levied against bernie sanders when right. it turned out that he had made money off of his book and was buying up a, a a third house you know every person in congress has to have two homes but he was getting a third house and that was you know, much to do about something for a lot of people. Well, and I was just going to say, I do think there's like important nuance here. And I think Hassan's response is absolutely accurate. Like, yeah, no, I, I think I should be taxed more. Like, that's right. the exact way to handle this situation. But there's something interesting about the standard of living. So like Bernie Sanders having multiple houses, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez selling these extremely expensive like hoodies or T-shirts on her website. Um, it, there is a question as to whether the system of government that these people are advocating for would allow a quality of life at that level um, or if these things are a product of freer markets. And so I think to an extent this is a fair criticism, but I don't think it's fair if somebody is saying, listen, I want to be taxed more right. and I want, right. I, I think the costs outweigh the benefits or I think the benefits outweigh the costs of going to a system where there's more control. You, of course, have to make that right. argument. And I doubt Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who parks her Tesla outside of Whole Foods and, um, you know, poses for these corporate glossy magazines, I doubt she fully understands the extent of that cost-benefit yeah. analysis. But you I have to at least also, defend it. It also comes down to definition of socialist, right? I mean, there's like a lot of different variations of what people think a socialist is. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of confusion even on that front. So a lot of criticism that are levied at like Hassan Piker or Bernie Sanders or AOC is that, well, they're socialists, so they kind of conflate it with communism or think that, 
they just believe in pure wealth distribution, like you're not allowed to make over a certain amount above other people. And that's not everybody's definition of socialism. It seems to be a fluid definition that hasn't been fully defined, and that might be part of the problem. Right. Saying you're a socialist is, is in many cases, just, identif just a, a piece of your identity and, and branding. You know, Marco Rubio was calling the, the reconciliation package Democrats are working on socialism. He called it Marxism. Uh, and so that's that's where we are. That you know, raising the corporate income tax, you know, from 25 to 28 is is Marxism. I mean, I don't think right. he was talking about the corporate income tax. Well, they, he's talking. Well, I mean, what name something in there that's Marxist? The quote child tax credit. I wouldn't call it Marxist, but I, I'm assuming he's talking about the quote child expanded child tax credit that is essentially UBI. And again, like we we have a lot of conversations on the show about the merits of it. But I, my guess would be that's what he's talking about, not the corporate. Right, corporate but it, it still leaves the means of production, the means of communication, the the commanding heights of the economy, in control of the the private sector. 100 percent. And yeah. just taxes it and gives a little bit to working people. And so for for Hassan. I think that there's 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 plenty of alignment between the way he's making his money and and his politics in the sense that five dollars a month you know from regular people is is coming in and you know he certainly wants a world in which regular people have five dollars a month disposable income to give to a twitch streamer so they can watch him play video games and have enough leisure time that they can watch sit around watching Hassan play video games uh, they, they don't necessarily want that controlled by Jeff Bezos a trillionaire oligarch, uh, right. but that's that is the the world that exists right now. Well, and the question is whether or not that's the logical outcome of some of the policy proposals, and that's where I think there's a perfectly fair debate. And again, it's a debate that we have here all the time. The Marco Rubio example is another one. Republicans back themselves into a quarter, calling everything socialist and lobbying Democratic socialists with attacks that are on socialism and Marxism as opposed to Democratic socialism. And you numb yeah. voters and you numb the public mm -hmm. as to what you're actually talking about. Uh, it's definitely a problem. I suspect he'd be fine with nationalizing Twitter. Which, so let's let's just do that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Marco Rubio would be. Yeah. Nationalized Twitch. Let's do it. Uh. Tomorrow on Rising, we have a great show for you. David Sirota is back. We'll be discussing the corporate lobbying firm attempting to get the Sackler family off the hook for their role in the opioid crisis. Plus, UAW member Scotty Holdison is joining. He'll give us the details on how the union is combating systemic corruption within its ranks and tell us why he thinks Biden is the most pro-union president of his lifetime. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. Kim, enjoy your afternoon out on the West Coast. Thank you. I will. <laughs>